If you are self-employed and have never heard of the GoBD, then you should definitely watch this video until the end. And if you've heard of the GoBD before, then you probably know that this is incredibly important for you. Even then, watch this video till the end. Because now we'll take a detailed look at what all of this actually means for you in your self-employment and the regulations you must adhere to. At first glance, GoBD sounds relatively catchy, but what does it all mean? Because the whole name is incredibly powerful. GOBD stands for Principles for the Proper Management and Storage of Books, Records and Documents in Electronic Form as well as for Data Access or simply GOBD. But what do the GOBD actually say and what are they actually for? Our business transactions, including accounting and all the systems around our accounting, are becoming increasingly digital. I believe I'm not telling you anything new, but the tax office has very specific requirements for your software systems and how you handle these software systems. Whenever the tax office says that your accounting is not proper, meaning it does not comply with the Joe BD, it may happen that the tax office eventually comes and simply does not believe your accounting. So you may have some records, but I don't believe that they are accurate and the risk is too high that you may have manipulated something. And then the tax office can actually go ahead and reject your accounting. They no longer believe your numbers, then estimate your revenues and profits. This usually becomes expensive because once the tax office starts to no longer believe you and estimates your revenues and profits, they naturally estimate them higher, then you have to pay taxes. Many self-employed, well, the GoBD, that's handled by the tax advisor, so I don't have to worry. Or I have an accounting software that covers all. The disappointing answer is no, unfortunately not. Your tax advisor and even your accounting software cannot handle everything in the GoBD area, as your so-called fund systems must also comply with GoBD. In this video and the following, I would like to share with you six points that you as a self-employed individual should definitely know about the GoBD. The first fact you should know about the GoBD is that your auxiliary and preliminary systems are also subject to the GoBD. And that's why it's not enough to just rely on the tax advisor or blindly trust the accounting system. But what are primary and secondary systems? These are all systems and therefore also software solutions, tools, etc. They assist in managing your day-to-day -day business operations. Specifically, we're referring to your order management, asset accounting, residential property accounting, invoicing program, cost accounting system, and payment system. This means the software you use for making transfers, for example, your time tracking system, your document management system, your archive, electronic travel logs, invoice input books, or even the interface between all these systems. All these systems and tools and apps are also subject to the GoBD. And these are, of course, systems that a tax advisor may not have access to in some cases. Thus, the tax advisor cannot handle the GoBD in this area at least. You must take care of that yourself. The second point you should consider is that your main accounting software, subsidiary systems, and preliminary systems must be audit-proof. But what does audit-proof mean again? The documents that you generate in a system, such as a quotation, should not be altered or modified at a later time. Or to be precise, these changes must be traceable afterwards. This means you should not be able to simply overwrite documents. It's quite easy to do in Excel and Word, I know, but that shouldn't be the case. That implies you must save each version separately once, and for that purpose it is of utmost importance that your software in some way records a change history or at the very least saves each version, for example, of an offer in your document management system for future reference. This naturally includes the need for a DMS system, and honestly the tool selection is absolutely crucial. Because numerous software solutions enable easy overwriting of specific elements, and these software solutions do not subsequently preserve the change history. But this is incredibly important for you, because if this is not met, you would be violating the GoBD. And that leads us to the third point. If you make a decision on a software, an application, a cloud solution, or whatever it may be, ensure that this software is audit-proof and in compliance with the German GoBD regulations. That is often not the case when you use any software solutions that come from the USA. Internationally, the German GOBD may not necessarily play the biggest role. A large number of software systems are compliant with GOBD and typically have some kind of software certificate in place. Very commendable. 
And as an example, I would like to mention LexOffice at this point. LexOffice has a software certificate confirming that the software LexOffice is GoBD compliant. And you should definitely look out for such software certificates when choosing a tool. Of course, this does not mean that all software solutions without such a certificate violate the GoBD. Not at all, I don't want to imply that. But it can and should be a criterion for you in selecting software solutions whether this software is GOBD compliant. And such a certificate gives you some security. In most companies and self-employments, there is still a mixture of digital receipts and paper receipts. And it's important that you always keep the original document. That means if you receive an invoice by mail, that is to say just a regular envelope, then this paper document is the original. And if you maintain an Excel spreadsheet, for example, for daily allowances or travel expenses and so on, then the original document is this Excel spreadsheet. Even if you receive a PDF invoice attached to an email, printing it out does not turn it into an original document. The original document is actually this PDF file. And it's important that you always keep the original document and not just consistently print everything out or simply scan it somehow. You can digitize a physical document and then process it digitally. However, you need a procedural documentation for that. The key word to focus on is replacement scanning. I've recorded a more in-depth video on this topic, which I'll link for you in the top right corner. Important for you, you must always pay attention to what your original document is. And I would generally recommend that you do your accounting exclusively digitally. That means for all physical documents, you need a procedural documentation that describes how to apply replacement scanning. Then you replace the physical receipt with a digital receipt, and then you have exclusively digital receipts, and then you have to continue working in your system with these digital receipts. The worst thing you can do is if you work physically one time, then digitally another time and mix everything up because then it's very, very difficult to trace back what certain changes refer to and so on. Another crucial aspect is the timely recording of your documents and the importance of timely documentation process. And non-cash business transactions, meaning what happens digitally, must be recorded within 10 days. Creditor transactions must be recorded within a period of eight days and all cash transactions, which include cash in and cash out, must be recorded on a daily basis. A very important note is that there is no simplification rule here for people who, for example, only submit their quarterly VAT returns or for people who do not submit any VAT returns at all because they have tax exempt sales. That's why this topic is important for you too. Just because you only have to do your accounting for sales tax once a quarter doesn't mean you have to do it more regularly for the GoBD. I would generally recommend that you establish an accounting routine where you regularly complete specific tasks on a weekly basis. I have recorded a more detailed video about the accounting routine I'd recommend. I'll also link it to you in the top right corner. The sixth point you should know are your retention obligations. Because the GOBD not only include the obligation to keep everything as up to date as possible, but also to keep it somehow retrievable for as long as possible, specifically for 10 years or so. Six years. Distinction in retention and archiving obligation between six and 10 years. Also recorded more in-depth video on whole topic, we'll link for you in top right corner. Feel free to check it out if retention obligations are new to you. It is crucial that you are aware that you must retain the significant accounting documents for a minimum of 10 years. And here a critical error frequently happens as the period of retention solely starts to elapse at the conclusion of the year in which a particular document was generated. And that is partially two years later than the actual date that is explicitly stated on such an invoice document. That is the reason why you are only on the safe side if you keep all the documents for a period of one to two years longer than these six or more, 10 years. My personal recommendation is to keep all documents for eight years when they are actually required to be kept for six years and to keep them for 12 years if you have kept them for 10 years. Then you are usually on the safe side. I know that the whole topic of GoBD is very dry, and I also know that for many self-employed people, it's such a boring, annoying administrative topic. The problem is the financial damage that can occur if you ignore all these things. It is insanely huge, and that's why my appeal is to take the whole thing seriously. And I hope that through my video, I could provide a somewhat easier access to the whole topic. If you have any more questions, feel free to write in the comment section below, and I'll be happy to assist you.
And if you are self-employed and would like to have a competent tax advisor by your side or are looking for an accounting program, etc., then take a look at how we can assist you with your self-employment. I'll simply link you all the information about our services here, or you can first check out the other videos on this channel, such as this one or this one.